give stuff away. Come on, man. Give stuff How many of the 300 are sharp? All of them. <laughs> That's the right answer. Give stuff away. Come on, man. Give stuff away. So you have a new book about cooking at home. What do you cook at home that you think would surprise people? Oh boy. First <laughs> I cook at home what's at the market, you know. People really look at me as maybe the quintessential French chef. Right. And then on page 32 I have a black bean soup with banana and cilantro on top. My wife being Puerto Rican and Cuban. And after 50 years that I've been in this country, over 50 years. So it's kind of a reflection reflection of who I am and there is so many types of cuisine that I uh, get involved with. You know, so. so the surprising thing about you would be almost everything. Exactly. <laughs> You've also obviously been an advocate for learning classic French techniques for so many years. Yeah. What do you think the skills are that people often skip over that you wish everyone would go back and learn? Well it's a question of discipline. Now in our time of instant gratification. Everyone wants to have that finish in five minutes. And the advantage of when I was a kid, of course, was television did not exist or any of this. So you can repeat, 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 repeat. And that becomes part of your nature. So you have to spend enough time to transcend that level so that you feel comfortable with that. And you have to have a good path, you have to have a good stove, you have to have a good board and of course a good knife. What types of knives do you recommend for people who are just starting out and saying, okay, I need to learn knife skills, I need to learn these things? Any, what do you any uh, sharp knife, that's what I recommend. A sharp knife and it could be from very expensive to very cheap one, doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. You know, I probably have 300 knives at home. How many of the 300 are sharp? All of them. <laughs> that's the right answer. People also might be surprised to know that you love burgers and you have a lot oh, of recipes sure. for burgers. Oh, yeah. Tell me a little bit about what you think the secret to a perfect burger is and how do you make well, your burgers? Quality meat, you know, to start with. The one that I do now, I go and buy brisket and uh, the thick and fatty part of the brisket. You know, and usually when I round this, uh, the proportion will be about between uh, 18, 20 percent fat and it's just about dry and it makes a great burger. And how do you cook your burger? Do it a little bit ahead so that you have time to put it to an oven like 150 degrees so it can rest a few minutes and equalize you know when you cook a piece of beef or anything and you cook it take it out and eat it right away you see the center may not be even warm. If right. you leave it 10-15 minutes depending on a big piece of meat or small one uh, to rest and uh, the myoglobin, the muscle tissue equalizes and it's pink right mm -hmm. throughout. So, very important to let it rest a few minutes. So you've also had a show on PBS forever. If you could yeah. take over the food on any of the other PBS shows, which would it be? Well, probably uh, Lydia, Lydia mm -hmm. Bastianich, you know. Uh, I think it's very straightforward. I can identify with that food. I know it's good just looking at it. Right. Rick Bellish also, probably. Mm. I love Mexican <laughs> cooking and a uh, good friend and his food is terrific. You could, take over. <laughs> yeah. you could take over all of their shows. Yeah, 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 yeah. You also have been ahead of quite a lot of food trends. You're kind of known oh, for doing know. things before their time. What do you see people doing now that you're excited about? And what are the things that you think are coming next for home cooks as well as in restaurants? Well, I don't know what's exciting is that, you know, you had all of those big schools from the CIA to here, Johnson & Well, all of those chefs would go, I mean, I'm thinking about 20, 30 years ago, and they, they are chefs right away because people needed so many chefs. Now it's kind of saturated mm -hmm. with hundreds of thousands of cooking schools. So uh, people go back to where they come from, mm -hmm. and it used to be that you could have only great restaurants, East Coast, West Coast, then after the center of the state started, mm -hmm. Chicago, Dallas, Philadelphia, and so forth. Now you'll go to the small town somewhere and you'll see a graduate of a school like here or the CIA going back doing a small little restaurant in a small town where you didn't have that type of restaurant before with high quality. Now it's coming back with a vengeance and it's good. A good vengeance. <laughs>